Hi everyone, I'm back for part two. I wanted to share how I created this background, this watercolor background, on a separate video in case you weren't interested, just to save some time. This is sticky back canvas. I love it. It's got a nice um, sticky back. You can adhere it to anything. And we're going to be using these wonderful watercolors. They're nice and opaque. I discovered this the other day when I was creating this card. Um, it's kind of like a tie-dye look and I wanted to share it with you how I did it and making a video. So that's what we're doing here. So first you want to saturate your background with a, a wide brush it gets the job done quicker and then just spread some color around using two or three different colors. My butterfly card is bright and red and bold, but I wanted this background to be a little bit more muted because I have, because uh, the front is a little bit more busy. So I like to heat set it and move that uh, the water around a little bit, or you could dab it off, but then you're diluting. If you if if the water, the colored water stays there, the color sinks in and stays on there a little bit better. So um, while I'm moving my heat gun around, I'm dabbing some more colors in different areas. And there's really no right or wrong way to do this. And you could spend forever on it or, or not a lot of time. But it's, you have to just put it in perspective. It's a background. But it is enjoyable and it is relaxing. So I keep adding some color, drying it, adding a little bit more. Now to get the tie-dye effect, you want to crumble it up. Just crumble it up a few different ways and then squish it tight in your hands. Get out some of that frustration. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a brush. And if you want, dry it a little bit first. And we're going to take the smaller brush and brush on the creases. So keep working it if you want, but the most important thing to do is to put the color on those creases. So keep working it and keep adding color on the creases. That's what gives you that nice tie-dye look. And you can add a bolder color or lighter colors, and then I'm going to water it down a little bit so it'll blend, squish it some more, and add a little bit more water. And then I'm going to stretch it out and dry it before I put it on my piece of paper. Now the ideal way on this red card, I had a piece of cardstock cut, pre-cut, smaller than the canvas. So that way I could tear and fringe the edges, edges, the edges better. So I didn't do that with this. I just got all excited and caught up and didn't pre-cut that card. So I just added some water. I'm going to dry it a little bit more, flatten it out, and then I'm going to stick it to the cardstock. Now later, after I assembled my card, I ended up taking the house off, disassembling it, and using a die cut to cut the sticky back. So you can die cut the sticky back. It works fabulous, like I did on the butterfly card. But anyways, it's an, it's an, the fringe look is a really neat look too. And sometimes it doesn't come off, it doesn't pull. Now, this would be working better if the paper, well, if the, if the, if the back is taken off. And I'm going to go ahead and lay down one end of the sticky back canvas first and kind of smooth that out. It's still a little wet. And then I'm going to stretch it. Don't mind my little rat's nest hair. So stretch it so you don't get any air bubbles or smooth it out with your fingers. You could use a roller or something if you want. 
but in the end, I ended up die cutting it. But it, it's still nice to know how workable it is. So this is a more subtle tie-dye look, and then the red card is a more bold tie-dye look. But it's really fun to do, it's quick, and um, I, I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. So have a great day. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. And there's a supply list in the bottom of the description.